Pepe Pepe Slipper. <laughs> and Paul. <laughs> you just get the tacked flourish. on at that. Did you hear that? <laughs> Otto, you were part of the course. I love that. Yeah. Welcome. 2013 edition of Breakfast with Bob and Paul. We're at beautiful Huggos. We're live on triathlete.com and our sponsor huddle. Sponsor, Bob. Get that, thing, get that thing up there. There we go. Monster Eye Sport, the athlete headphone. Right there. Love that. Um, our next guest, five-time Ironman champion. Five times, Ben. Five-time Living in that motorhome, <laughs> Heather Wertel. Hi that. guys. <laughs> See, that's what it means when you think about triathletes making a lot of money. Yes. She's won five Ironman titles. Yes. And she's living in a motorhome. Yep. I love that. That's yeah. deluxe motorhome with those yeah, big yeah. push-out sides, sort no, of like the rock have bands. No, we don't any pop-outs. It's what? Just wow. A little twenty-three foot, tiny little thing. <laughs> We're just cheap. We can't move out of it. <laughs> wait, wait. And you're another one of our husband and wife triathlon couples, sort of like Huddle can relate to, yeah. uh, with your husband Trevor, who's yeah. getting ready for Ironman Arizona. So he's giving you basically no love this week. Yeah, it's it's a bit a bit of a challenge. He's the support guy, but he's also trying to do his own training. So it's kind of a lot of planning. Like, okay, I'll drop you off here so you can ride, and then you meet me here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we're used to it. I mean, that's always kind of how we roll. Both of us focused on our yeah. on our sport and doing our best. So, so. where do you park the motor home here? <laughs> yeah, we put, it, we put it on one of those sh container ships, and then. Uh, Did you come over on the container <laughs> ship? Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah we were okay. capped out. Nice. It was great. We we're swimming alongside as training on the way over. No, we left the, the RV in St. George, Utah, okay. where we, we spent a lot of time training. Oh. Uh, flew out of Vegas to here. So we're staying actually, though, up in a, a nice little vacation rental up the mountain, kind of away from everything. So, so in nice. a, like a condo or something? Just like, like a little house. Wow. Yeah. Is I that a little it's luxury like, for you? I, yeah. I, I spent a lot of time in the bathroom because <laughs> it's like a lot of space, <laughs> you know, and you can have a shower and just put a robe on and walk to the bed instead of like going into another building. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty dumb. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> See, that so to me is. What, what led you guys to, I don't care about this triathlon crap, what yeah. led you to moving into a motorhome? And uh, talk about the positives and negatives of that. Well, you know, in 2008, I was still working full-time for Natural Resources Canada, and I won uh, Ironman Coeur And it okay. was just kind of like, who the heck is this person, you know? Um, but for me, that really lit a fire, like, wow, if I'm doing well working full-time, then if I committed to being a full-time athlete, that could be awesome. And I knew Trev had that goal, too, and we were like, okay, but how do we swing it financially right because we want to have a mortgage and all these payments and have a very insecure income and so we we had gone to wildflower actually in like a little truck camper one yeah. time and that was like really doable we had a lot of fun yeah and so we just kind of bit the bullet sold our condos sold all our stuff bought this little 23 foot rv that was up for auction on repo depot <laughs> repo, <laughs> repo <laughs> depot did they become Bye. a sponsor <laughs> yeah i was gonna oh, say no. they that should would be a great sponsor <laughs> depot. On jersey so, i love know, that someone could make the payments on it got repossessed we got a really good price on auction and then we moved into it lived in it t in it for a half a year while we still w were working yeah just to save up and then in the winter of 2009 we just hit the road, went to Salman, California, and just started training full time. So mostly it was just because that was the only way we could afford to live and travel and train and do our thing. So, so I, I remember when you won Coeur d'Alene, but I really remember when you won Ironman St. George. Right. You, you guys came down there, won Ironman St. George, and then it seemed like you almost were adopted by that community. Talk, talk a little bit about how St. George, because I know you spent a lot of time there. We just yeah. talked about it before we came on. How has St. George become part of your triathlon life and maybe just your life in general? Yeah, it has. When I went down to that race, uh, I, I just fell in love with the area. The, the landscape is just magnificent yeah. with the Red Rocks and Zion National Park and Snow Canyon. And it's a brilliant training environment. And the people in the community, like for the inaugural race, that was some of the best volunteer support I'd ever seen on course, you know, yeah. and having been to Ironman Canada and all these really great races, it was, it was mind blowing. And they were just so into it. And, and, and yeah, we really just like, you know, got to know a lot of people in the community and we do feel like a sort of honorary St. Georgian. So, uh, we just go back there a lot and train and it's a Love great that. place to hang out. Good climate. It's a bit too great hot climate, in the summer, yeah. but we go back home to Canada. Yeah. In the summer, we're sort of snowbirds and then down to St. George a lot in the fall and spring. So, so how big is this motorhome? It's just 23 feet. 23 it's feet. <laughs> so it's like you walk in. And you're there. Like, there's like the bench, the ta kitchen table with bench seats. And then yeah. across from that is like the sink. And yeah. then the back is the bed and the bathroom. Right. So you guys, you guys have both had enough success at this point that I, I don't feel like you guys need to be committed to that 23 foot <laughs> you can step home. up but, to a 30 but, you, <laughs> but, but and yet <laughs> and yet you are I, yeah uh, no it's true i mean we definitely could 
you know, get into a house. But part of our thing is we're never in one place all year. Yeah. And we just really like the convenience of, I'm kind of sick of riding here and we can pack up our whole life in a couple hours and be on the road to somewhere else. And so we've thought a lot about, okay, well, should we get a place in Penticton, you right. know, be back home in Canada. But then we're like, ah, oh, but then we want to be down in the States in the winter. And so a lot of it is just our personal choice. We like living a minimalist sort of lifestyle and we like the RV. So did you, cool. really did you cool. have to sell a lot of crap when oh. you decided to get them? I can imagine. Yeah, we were, we were I mean, really close to like a St. Vincent de Paul, you know, where yes. and so they loved us. We were just like, here's some more furniture. Here's oh my some, God. Like, no one. And what did you, I mean, so to me, the one thing is you got all the memories, photos and all that type of stuff, medals and trophies. Yeah, so my parents, my parents. Have okay, a lot. so they have yeah. a garage. Yeah, they have like okay. nice. Nice. Okay. All right, okay. Perfect. Yeah. So you, when did you meet Trevor? We were friends in high school, actually. We were chemistry partners in Chemistry 11 in uh, Vernon, <laughs> British really? Columbia. Really? Yeah. You didn't blow Vernon, up stuff together? Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, I definitely helped them get through chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is like Rock and Heather. Heather got Rock through school, and you got Trevor through. Nice. Yeah. And then, uh, but that we were just really good friends, and then we sort of went our separate ways and met up again uh, in in Victoria when I was doing my master's, and he was going to school on the island, and we kind of hooked up ever since. So you were out mountain biking. And yeah, crashed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we were out mountain biking. He was training for a twenty four hour uh, yeah. mountain bike race, yeah. which he he did really well at those. And I crashed and landed on my bar end, got a massive hematoma in my quad. Ended up in the hospital for several days because they thought I maybe broken my femur. My leg oh, just swelled God. up. And so we kind of fell in love when he was like at my bedside. He played for he was Florence Nightingale. Oh, he wow. did a great job. Yeah, wow. he brought wow. flowers and you know. How romantic! That. Oh, That's way so to nice. suck up. That's great. <laughs> way to Would suck. Would you up. like to move into a twenty-three foot <laughs> motorhome with me? Have I got a deal oh, for you? Oh my God! I am the most romantic guy in the world. We're gonna go. It'll have white walls. It'll yeah. be great. Your parents I must love have been that. like, nope. Yeah, nope, he's out. Not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, it, that was a big thing for my even becoming athletes and doing all that like. Because I was in the academic sort of a vein for a long time. Yes. Like, I'm going to be a prof at university and went to school, got all these degrees. And it's like, no, we're selling everything and living in a motorhome and being <laughs> athletes. But I think, you know, they appreciate if you're pursuing your passion and you're yeah. happy and you're going after your goals. And then seeing us be successful, they're, they're, they're all over it. They're super fans. So. so you guys got into the growing sport of adventure racing back in the day, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and what uh, did you... Tra did you compete together? No, we did solo adventure races because we okay. knew we at least wouldn't be compatible, like, <laughs> trying to do you it together. You would kill each other, yeah. yeah. Seriously? We're, both, no, oh, we're yeah. both very competitive, but we like doing our own race. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Interesting. And so we, we're really great trading partners, but we have sort of our own focus. So we knew we wanted to do the solo ones just because we thought it was kind of more challenging and more mm. fun, and we wouldn't have to argue with each other. And, <laughs> and then, uh, but, yeah, we didn't, like... You'd be doing awesome. You'd be winning the race, and then there'd be some stupid orienteering challenge <laughs> that you'd like mess up, and you'd just be like, ah. Uh, so, so it didn't matter how good yeah. an athlete you were. You had to like think and stuff. Yeah, I don't know why, <laughs> but the orienteering just always got me. I like agree. you get you get your compass readings off just a bit, and then they like you know you end get up an and you're like, I know. What's going you on? end up yeah. in a different world. <laughs> so uh, I think we share a a, a dislike of being cold, wet, lost, hungry, and sleep deprived. Yeah, indeed. When you're pushing yourself that hard, I want an arrow showing me, like, yes. okay, turn here. Yes. <laughs> you know? yeah. One of my favorite Iron Man stories is Robin Benincasa, big time adventure racer, raced here one year, right? Came here, and they had, this was right after the earthquake, right. and it was a crack across the Queen Highway. Literally a crack. A crack. Right. It was a I crack. Mean, not, not like a crevasse, right. a crack. A crack. So during the athlete meeting, there was 40 questions like, so wait, what, what, what's a crack look like? Oh, and how yeah. am I going to get across like this? Or, so Robin, of course, comes from adventure races. He's like, listen, all I know is within 11 hours, I'm going to have a drink with an umbrella in it, right? <laughs> I'm not going to have to worry about where I'm going, how I'm getting there, if something's marked. Do I need food? Rope. Will there be water? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, it's like when you get water at an aid station every mile, right? It's pretty Yeah, close. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So moving into being a professional triathlete, was, that was after the whole adventure racing thing. Yeah, well, we sort of, I know Trevor had always had an ambition to complete an Ironman, right. but neither of us had really a swimming background. He literally could not swim 25 yards across a pool when he was 23. So <laughs> um, I kind of taught him how to swim, you know, the basics. And he was a great cyclist. He, he had a road bike background, and I'd only ever mountain bike, so he kind of taught me how to ride a road bike. And, get down in the arrow bars which is really scary you know the first little while and uh, yeah. 
And then I had a, a rowing background, so I transitioned into cycling really easily. Yeah. And I found that I was strong at that. And also just trying to stay on Trevor's wheel. I mean, that was a huge part <laughs> of my development, just stay on his wheel. <laughs> um, and so that worked really well. And then we both just got into doing better and better in triathlon. So, so the progression that we've you know, had the pleasure of watching over the last sort of three to five years has been absolutely, it's been like, as, as we talked about beforehand, it's been very steady. But when you get to the point that you've gotten to in 2013, I think for a lot of people who haven't watched that rise, they're like, oh my gosh, look at Heather Wirtel, where has she come from? Right. You know, where a lot of people, we, we know where you've come from and we've watched it. How has that changed how you're looking at Kona this year? Because last year, 14th, but when you look at what you've done this year, when, when you look at the results you've had, you've got to sit there and look at this field. And while some people are getting all intimidated, like you may have in past years when you look at this field, now you're thinking, you know what? <laughs> I'm one of these girls. I'm, yeah. I'm one of these contenders. And I'm going to be out there looking at the podium. Yeah, no, absolutely. It is. It it changes your perspective. And, and I've definitely come to this race being like, it's the world championships and, and feeling intimidated. And now I'm like, wow, geez, I've raced a lot of these people. I've beaten yep. a lot of these people in races. And my lead up has gone really well. And yeah, my running is now consistent and fast and where it needs to be. And so you just know, okay, yeah, there, I have the potential to be really competitive at this race. Uh, and so it is, it's just a good feeling of confidence and of experience coming in. What is it with your running? What what has changed for you? Because it has, it has definitely, you know, whereas in the past, some people might have thought, okay, I can let her get this much and right. not a big deal. I can probably get her on the run. Now nobody's thinking that. Everyone's going, oh my God, here she comes. Right. Yeah. It's just consistent hard work. Mm. I mean, I run often eight times a week, you know, double runs, constantly hammering the form, just getting those knees high, getting my, you know, hips over my feet and, and just working on it year after year. It finally just that proprioception and that muscle memory, it all starts just coming together. And so you can start not having your form break down and, and just start, yeah, just performing consistently at, at a higher level. So it's just that time. You I mean, you have to, it's a hard sport. It's epic distance. You just have to toughen up over the years and deal toughen with the up. training. Exactly. Loss, so. Toughen up. You live in a motorhome. <laughs> yeah. You're pretty darn tough. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. No. And you the shower in something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the biggest advantage she's got this week. Oh, she's yeah. actually Every got a shower. Every time she's out there racing, she's going, oh my God, these guys don't live in a motorhome. <laughs> they have no idea what tough is. Wind, heat, come on. Have they been living in a tin box when it's 100? 150 degrees out. <laughs> yeah. So was what was your first year here in Kona? Was that 11? My very first year was as an age grouper in oh, okay. 2006. But okay. um, as a pro. As a pro. Yeah, it was 11. Been, yeah. So you yeah. were eighth first time out. Yeah. Uh, no, I was here one more. T I was here before that, but I, I DNF'd. I okay. just didn't have. But a good the first year. Yeah, yeah it was eighth. Yeah. And then last year, unfortunately, 14th, yeah. I had um, I was on antibiotics for a bad infection last Not year. Not good. Oh. Yeah. So that sucked. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I actually had a, a saddle sore that turned into an abscess, and I had to oh. get it drained at the oh, Kona emergency room. Right man, wait, wait, before the race? Yeah. Oh, oh you're wait, kidding so then me. Uh, you're no. like a doctor's. What should you do? Uh, I would stay off it. I'm just gonna ride 112 miles. <laughs> I would miles. ride 112 miles. Yeah, yeah. On so a, I'll be fine. On a little seat that big. Yeah, yeah it'd be so awesome. That, so that I'm sure it felt better afterwards. Yeah, I mean, I think the antibiotics more than anything were, sure. they just mess you up. Absolutely. Uh, so that was really unfortunate. It's one of those things like you're so focused on your goal yeah. that you're like, no, I got to get my last hard ride. I got it. And you just ignore things that you shouldn't, you know, you're like, oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And then, oh, no, it wasn't fine. It's this massively like infected, really bad thing. And I think that's where people can go wrong in Kona. And it's easy to do because it's, you're like, it's Kona. I got yeah, it. Yeah, you're gotta possessed this, by it. You know, this extra thing and this other. When really, you just need to chill out and know you've done you've your, done the work. preparation. And yeah. just, yeah. So so that was a lesson learned for it, me last And it's year. tough, too, because when you swim here in Kona, which everyone does every day because it's spectacular. And I think a lot of athletes have learned this over the years. If you have even a nick on your body, yes. the chance of infection it's is really like high. thousandfold here. And yeah. we're talking staff and strep. Every, everything bad you can get, you can get here swimming in these waters if you don't clean it up. Yeah. And so that probably had something to do with what you experienced last year. Yeah, I know I know now for sure, like after Monday, I don't go in the ocean. And uh, yeah. a lot of people are that way as well. So even though it's the best place oh, to swim, you're yes. like, oh, yeah, it's the heaven. Pool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go to the pool. Yeah. So this year, great year. 2000, you, you win Coeur d'Alene, new course record. 
uh, Rev3, Quasi, Ironman 70.3, Panama, and Calgary. Yeah. It's a phenomenal season. Yeah, thank That you. has to give you a lot of confidence coming into this race. Sure, absolutely. I mean, every time I've towed the line this year, uh, I've been on the podium. So um, you just, you know the consistency that is yes. there. And you just like everything you hope on race day, it all just comes together. And, and when it does, you know you have the potential to be right up there. So it's just making the right decisions, you know, doing the right things nutrition-wise, not getting wrapped up too much in, I got a race when, you know, you have so far to go and you right. still need to be within yourself. Um, so, yeah. So, so knowing what you know about these other courses that you've done, one of the most impressive things to me in the races, the Ironman races that you've won, as we talked about, is you've got a course record at every single one of them. So when you come to Kona, you know what this course is like. You know what those races are like. How, when you look at this and you look at the times, you know, we talked about what happened in Coeur d'Alene. When you got that course, you, you had issues. Then you still got the course record. Right. So when you look at Kona and you look at potential for time, I mean, how do you, how do you see it in terms of swim, bike, run? Are you going to reveal that to us? I mean, every athlete knows what's, what's possible for There's them. No, it's just the two of us. Yeah, yeah no one's, no one's <laughs> going <gonna, laughs> to no say anything. Well, so. just ignore that little you know, camera you know, thing over there. Yeah. All the races where I, I've won and have the course records, they're all hard races, you know, with right. a lot of terrain. Yeah. And so, my, you know, if you look at the times, and, and sometimes it's funny because the ratings look at times, they're not the fastest times. They're not, like, sub nine because the courses are just really right. hard. Yeah. But this course is also really hard, and you sort of think like, I'm good at I'm good at the tough stuff. So I like want it to be hellaciously windy, and I and, and I, I like girl. it when it's hard. Um, it hasn't been actually the races I've done here. It's been pretty calm. And yeah, it has. And hot. So yeah. that's its own challenge. So you know, you, you kind of go, okay, these times are in the realm of possibility, and if it all comes together, like yeah, wow. Just looking at the numbers. Yeah. And I'm sure, but there's ten women that looking at the numbers go, oh, I can pull off that day, right. but only one of them pulls off that day. So what are those numbers? Come on. <laughs> nope. No, I'm not going to go there. Uh, oh, and, you're, and, and way to go, way to jinx, way to jinx Saturday by saying it's been really nice. Oh, there's yeah, always yeah. mellow here. I was hoping, That's I was hoping always, to she jinx wants, it, yeah. She wants, she wants to jinx it. So how tough is it? You win St. George twice, right? Yeah. And now it's a 70.3. Here, here's a race. It's sort of like, imagine Dave Scott, if they took Cohen said, you know what? It's too hard. We're going to make yeah. it into a half distance. Yeah, that was a bummer. I, I bet. I mean, th as a half, though, it's still it's pretty epic. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I'm really glad that there's still a race in that community because right. it's a fantastic place to be. And the race itself is fantastic. So it's like, well, if there's not going to be a full, then it's awesome that there's a hard half. But I would still love there to be a, be a full. Because well, it's just one of those really tough, awesome, like really pat yourself on the back when you do well at that race kind Love of races. Yeah. So, so at what point this week does Trevor realize that the Hawaii Ironman trumps Ironman Arizona? Yeah, I mean, really does, when does, when the, does the, the hammer the, come your down? Your needs are more important uh, yes. than his with that little cocktail weenie of Ironman Arizona. I'm thinking in about five, five minutes, minutes yeah. Yeah, would, yeah. Be, yeah. would be about you the right time. Figure it out. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's good. He He's very supportive, but he's still of course wants to do his own training and, and it's yeah. important i mean hey on race day he can go have a swim and do a little jog while i'm out riding so exactly that, that all and works. he can come join us on friday night and thank god i'm that racing party yeah, that's true yeah, and get his go. medal <laughs> he can come home and wake you up about three in the morning hey have a good one tomorrow <laughs> i'll wake yeah, up about noon fly. we're definitely like no seven in bed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Heather Wirtel has been our guest again. This is Breakfast with Bob, 213, 2013 edition. We're at beautiful Huggos. We're uh, live on triathlete.com. Our main sponsor, iSport. Look at that, Huddle. I sponsor iSport, the athlete's headphone. And we couldn't do this without our main man, Mr. Poncho Man. Poncho Man. <laughs> I'm riding in your RV. Yeah! <laughs> Watching Breakfast with Bob and Paul. <laughs> For more, log on to <laughs> Thank you, Pacho Man.